Okay. All right, we're settled in. Welcome to Parent Power Hour. This is Kristen. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope it felt like a weekend. I'm not sure. I think when we left each other on Friday, it was like, what, what day? What day is today? And then I was like, mm, what, what year is today? <laughs> <laughs> Felt like a whole year last week, didn't it? Um, went through so many changes. Hey, good morning, Shay. Happy to see your little face there on your little icon. Shay, if you'll give me a thumbs up, let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, my computer is working overtime, and I just keep having this. It's it's the fan. I know it's the fan that's, like, trying to cool off the whole thing. Um, so I feel like you might be getting, like, a sound. I hope not, but... In any case, um, I'll just keep going until I hear otherwise. Um, parent Power Hour is about giving some tips and tools to those of you that are uh, parents, either for yourself or for how you might uh, be working out with your kiddos as you're home more often with them. Thanks for the thumbs up. Great. Thank you, Shay. <laughs> and also, if you're not a parent, um, this is for any adult. Um, ideally, I'm also not a parent. Um, not that I'm ideally not a parent. That came out wrong. <laughs> um, but what I am is part of the New Minds Enrichment team, and our goal is to bring you as much support as we possibly can to navigate these uncertain times and to navigate all of these changes, which is what we're actually going to talk about today. Um, just to do a little check-in, how are we doing on our gratitude practice? Um, I got out my journal. I started a new one. Um, these journals are for 90 days, and so technically March 1st, I, no, April 1st, I would be starting a new one, um, and March 1st, for some reason, I was already out. I don't know if I, like, double gratituded. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> I don't think that's a real word. Um, but I already got mine done for the day and I like, um, I'll just, I'll just go through mine. Um, today I'm grateful for, I always write, write five down. Um, today I'm grateful for access to yoga on demand that I can do my morning yoga practice, um, through an app on my phone. And I think this is actually something I've been writing down that I'm grateful for for quite a long time um, because I used to have a pretty steady yoga practice um, and I was very accessible to yoga studio and then also it would come to my work. Um, the yoga instructor, she would come to where I worked and so very accessible, didn't even have to like put a lot of effort into it, just you know, pack your clothes in your mat before I went to work in the morning and then she would be there um, around like five o'clock once a week and so it was very accessible and then um where my position that i'm in now it's it's a little bit of timing wise right balancing the time um up until being locked at home um trying to figure out how i was going to always you know make a certain class and that will always stress me out and which is exactly opposite of how you're supposed to start yoga right you're supposed to start with a place from a place of gratitude mindfulness and so i would end up rushing into yoga and not being ready and Anyway, moral of that story is um, I do some free apps on my phone um, if you're interested about what those are. And then I also do, um, just shoot me a message, and then I also do a paid app. Um, and it's not just yoga. It's, it's full body fitness. It's cardio. Um, they even have options for um, treadmills and bikes. So number one, I'm grateful that I can just pop in there. I can either do it on demand. I, they also do have live classes that I could tune into if I wanted to be part of the community. The second thing I'm grateful for that I thought about um, yesterday is comfy clothes. <laughs> um, I got this really comfy, you know, like we're all doing, we're staying at home, so we're just staying in some, you know, comfy clothes all day. And I was in those like all day yesterday. They were so comfy and I'm so grateful that I have those. Um, the third one I wrote is, is the, the leaders and the models that I'm able to look through, uh, look to, excuse me, the leaders and the models that I can look to for guidance, um, and how to navigate this business side, this professional side of what's going on, um, and all the changes that we're having, as well as the overlap of, um, you know, how it's, how it's impacting my, my personal life, my the way that I think about things, you know, my personal mindfulness and habits. Um, number four, I'm grateful for the time to figure out what's going to be next. Um, yeah, that says enough of itself. And then I'm also number five, 
I wrote down that I'm grateful for quality time with my family, specifically my four-year-old and soon-to-be two-year-old nephews. Um, they are, yeah, they have so much life and joy. And I went on a huge thing last time on Friday about how I lived away from them so long, and now I live in the house with them, and that's it brings me so much joy um, to do that. So we're just doing a check-in. If you're just joining us, um, part of our habits that we're working to create um, while we're in this uncharted ter uncharted ter bleh, uncharted territory again you're welcome you guys are the first ones I've talked to today <laughs> besides asking my sister hey where are you guys doing kinder music downstairs upstairs where should I be <laughs> um, so hey Jana I see that she's here too welcome good morning we're doing a little recap on our gratitude practice so I read through mine um, that I've already done today if you haven't done it yet today just find the time um, just Ooh, I just did a whole thing about that, didn't I? <laughs> um, I hope you are able to find a time um, at some point today to write them down. Um, it doesn't have to be a pretty journal. It can be even something as simple as a note card. It can be anything. Um, just get them out of your head, write them down, write what you're gra grateful for. It can be anything big or small. Some other samples that are um, in the front of my journal are, you know, coffee, morning time, uh, a new dinner, dinner recipe that turned out so good. Um, both kids had a great week. Won't we all be grateful for that when we're able <laughs> to write that down consistently, right? Um, lunchtime together, sunshine. So I'd love to hear from you if you're just joining us. If you pop up um, something maybe even over the weekend that you experienced that maybe you weren't expecting to or that when you're in the middle of it, you were like, this is so great. I am enjoying this. It could be the delicious coffee that you picked up through drive through It could be um, anything. So I'd love to hear from you for that. So pop in at any time that you feel that you're ready, or even if we start to move on conversation, I'd love to hear um, some things that you brought you joy in the past 24 hours or maybe over the weekend, and some things that you're grateful for. Let's see what we've got. Could be maybe the awesome jams that I played through my earbuds. <laughs> I was going to play it through my laptop like I did on Friday, but my computer's having this like overheat thing. I think I've got a, got, I've has lots of videos on it right now, so it's working very hard. Um, and I've got to clear some of that off because it's, it's uh, doing that fan noise where it's trying to cool off. I'm just vamping until I see somebody pop in with something that they're grateful for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Well, I look forward to reading those either in the comments as we continue or um, I'll stop some other stream of consciousness. Yes, the question is, what are some of the things that you're grateful for? What are some of the things that over the last 24 hours or over the weekend that you were in the middle of and you're like, this is awesome or this is great or I love this. I love um, baking and over the weekend it was my sister's birthday and um, there were lots of desserts involved <laughs> as you do as a celebrate for the for celebration and um, I made a new recipe um, from one of my favorite recipe writers she's awesome um, her her handle and everything as well as some of her cookbooks is called half baked harvest everything that's in there um, we're vegetarian so even her vegetarian recipes are out of this world she has non-vegetarian recipes that also look delicious um, but I tried one of her um, desserts it was a brownie on t with Nutella on top of a cookie oh my gosh <laughs> I'm so happy that I tried that recipe so I think that would break it down to for me um, and I'm just vamping while you guys are gonna pop in with some things that bring you joy or some things that um, you have gratitude for that when you have time later you might even write them down um, could be a notebook paper could be a journal something like that that you're grateful for I'd love to hear you pop in with your comments as you join us um, all right and Shay if you'll kind of type that up also 
um, as the question so that when people do join us and maybe pin it for us as well, um, we're going to, we're going to call you my, my admin moderator for right now, since, um, looks like other people are out doing some things. Um, but yeah, if you'll just pop that question in there and pin it so that others can join us in that. Shay says she's grateful for her family, her Dyson. I've heard her talk about her Dyson before. <laughs> this is real. This is not made up. Um, that her son is feeling better. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I know he's had a tough little few weeks. Um, her relationship with her mom, coffee and snacks. Yes, coffee and snacks. <laughs> snacks are life, right? <laughs> um, coffee's life. Let's get real. Let's all get real. I haven't even had mine yet this morning, and I'm like, oh, I need coffee. I get the shakes from not having coffee. Um, I know a lot of people get it from having coffee. No, it doesn't do that for me. All right. Um, another little thing, just to kind of recap from last week. Um, someone had asked that we have a little visual um, as a review for. Um, one of the kind of the theme that ended up emerging um, throughout the week last week. And we started with um, on Monday, actually, we started with on episode one, a little bit more of like a self talk. Um, how are we, what kinds of things are we saying in our head? How are we acknowledging the present and the reality that we are in? Um, and that seemed that trans, um, that kind of started to, to weave into what ended up happening on Tuesday on episode two, which was writing out what we um, see and doing a vision casting experience on how we, what's important to us, determining our why. And this specific um, acronym, she calls it a wish. And so I think that this, this specific thought process is especially easy, um, accessible, is a better word to say, accessible for some of the smaller things in life. Um, it, this isn't just a thought process for the big things, like what is your why? That's big. And that is something that's big enough that can have an influence on the smaller things and the things, the smaller activities and actions that you take um, for yourself each day. Um, and so what I would suggest is that you use the, the concept of a wish for some of these smaller moments that are going to help you get through the day that are going to be the things that, um, you know, when you're in the middle of something that you haven't experienced before is to pause and say, okay, what is my wish? I wish fill in the blank. Um, your next stop, step would be to determine the outcome. And that is something that we kind of, i in our experience together last week, we sort of smushed these two together. Um, and it was a little bit more of a like vision casting. What is your desired outcome? Where do you see yourself? What is, what is driving the driving force behind everything that you're doing? Um, and then the third day on, or excuse me, I think it was episode four or three. Um, I meant to write out the episode so I could refer them clearly to you so you could access them yourself and go back. Um, but you'll see it in the in the show notes when you go back and access those videos. But determining your obstacles, and I think this is, I don't think, I know this is a step that I often find myself skipping, and I bet you do too. I mean, I know there's a lot of, you know, very successful, very driven people on here that, I mean, that's the reason why you're here, because you care about making sure that you are powered up that you have the power, that you need the encouragement, the tips, the tools that you need so that you can better serve those around you, including your family, including the company that you're trying to work for or run at home over these next few days, and that we're so focused a lot of times on our desired outcomes, on the actual productivity, the list of things that we have to do, but a lot of times we forget to identify the obstacles. We forget to identify the things that might get in your way. And a lot of times, a lot of times when you do that, um, you are acknowledging things within yourself. So it could be that your obstacles are your own thoughts. Okay. Um, the other option would be other hindrances in your productivity, knowledge level of something, skill at something. Um, interaction with other people. Okay. So there's lots of different kinds of obstacles and we could have a whole day on just that. Um, and then finally the step to get out, to finish up your whoop 
is to plan, is to plan what the next steps are going to be. I keep switching fingers because it's flip-flopped over here. I will get used to it, right? Um, this is not an, an obstacle I anticipated today. I should have anticipated this obstacle of not being able to. And the teacher in me is like, okay, be opposite, but be the same. <laughs> and I'm very, in my teaching, in 15 years of practice, I'm very used to, you know, doing things backwards for kids or my left to right so that it's there. Anyway. All right. So planning, what are your plans? So then you've identified these three things and then you, you're executing your plan. And we finished up on Friday with, um, how, when you're executing your plans, when you're going about your day, when you're getting into those things, that that also requires several levels of communication. So I definitely encourage you to run back to last week's episodes, um, watch them on double time as I'm refining my practice and my approach and sharing my ideas with you. Um, you know, there might be some times where I'm talking about things that um, are around the subject and I know many of you are like, let's just get to it, let's get to it. So um, the way that you can watch those is to go to newminds.tv and that is our live website that we are having as an archive right now of all of our pre-recorded live videos. So whether we're talking about the time that you spend with me here on Parent Power Hour or any of our steam train, um, starting the day and ending the day, we have segments for that. We have Steam in Espanol. We have Around the World with Mr. Walter. Uh, we have Into the Dungeon Verse and role playing and those sorts of games um, and, and design and creativity. And uh, there's even uh, reading of The Lion and Witch of the Wardrobe that happened last week, which I literally would like stop what I'm doing just to go listen to that. That takes me back to like fourth grade. Um, so Yes, please hop over to our site, newminds.tv. You can find the archive of all of the ep episodes that I just referred to you um, about our Parent Power Hour. And so ultimately, kind of what I landed on for today, and I spent a lot of time thinking about that this weekend, and in general, also listening to you and your comments, um, the way that some of the things that you're expressing in your comments um, on these videos as well as many of the other videos that we have that are um, the, the ones that are more kid, kid focused, the activities for the kids. And what I hear a lot of questions um, surrounding, and you may not be asking this verbatim, um, but a lot of people are like me and we're, we're wondering how are we going to handle change? How are we going to handle this? It's this common conversation I'm having with friends that are teachers, with my parents, with um, our families, so um, with our new me nation universe, with kiddos, um, even hearing from you know my older nieces and nephews, they're 16 and or they're actually 17 now and seem to be 13. And you know, for them also it's this what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? What's, what's going to happen next? And trying to anticipate and ultimately what we're struggling with is, is change, right? Um, so I don't know about you, but change is not easy. <laughs> I think, I think you might agree with me that any kind of change is not easy. Um, change is not, it's, it's hard. I mean, that's why it's called change. It is change because it's something that you've never done before. You're doing something, you're experiencing something, you're going through something that you've never experienced before. Um, and with that comes a lot of the things we did talk about last week, which are a lot of our fears, um, a lot of fears of imperfection, a lot of fears of failure, um, fear of missing out, right? And um, what we're actually experiencing and we're working to figure out together is this new reality, is this this new normal, right? Now, for those of us in Dallas, we're starting week two of um, virtual living, <laughs> um, working from home, and uh, we have, you know, new restrictions, definitions of what that means put on us by our cities, by, you know, the government, by um, our, our workplaces. And so this is new for us. Again, we're starting a second week now 
of some some more new changes that happened in the news for us in the Dallas area over the last 24 hours. And then for those of you that are in the Dallas area, I know we have some um, some friends and some viewers that are you know in the Middle East, that are in Dubai, that are in Argentina, that are in places where you know maybe they're a week behind us in Argentina. And then in other places, in Lebanon and Dubai and those places, we've got people that are one or two weeks ahead of us. So it doesn't matter where we are on this spectrum. The same, the thing is that that is the same is change. Change is the same for all of us. We are all experiencing change. Different levels of change, different markers of like we're here and then in two weeks we might be here and last week we were there. But I think we can all agree that what we're struggling with and what we are experiencing is redefining what is this new reality, which comes with a, with, with a lot of it defining what are our new roles, right? Because now you're not, now in addition to being someone who, you know, goes to work or someone who teaches, you are also a stay-at-home mom and a teacher, or you are also, you know, a CEO and a stay-at-home parent, or you are a teacher and uh, you are also someone who is on your laptop 24-7 because you're responding to student and parent inquiries and needs, so then that's a little bit more of that, you know, what we would say and not necessarily is, is normal for a teacher role, um, to be constantly responding to parent inquiries and emails and tech issues, and I'm not even going to try to to, lim to to put anything on um, labels out there because even tomorrow, I bet the labels of who you are, what you're doing, and how you're doing it is probably going to shift and change in some aspect. And so in the middle of change, this is where all of our work that we've done, identifying our why, identifying who what we've said is most important to us, identifying what are the obstacles to get in our way becomes even, even more important. There, there's more emphasis on that. And ultimately, that is what's going to help us get through the change. As an adult, we know that change comes with lots of unknowns. And we also know that there is something on the other side of change, right? For our kiddos, they don't have that ability cognitively to process that, oh, I'm going through something new and different. And I know I'll be a different person. I'll have a different skill. I'll be able to have the opportunity to refine something that I wasn't so sure about before. No, no, that they're not, they're not there. Even high schoolers, they're, they're still freaking out about the, the reality that is in front of them. And that is 100% okay. That's okay that they're freaking out that they don't get to take their AP test, that they don't get to go to all of the events that high schoolers are going to, that they're not getting to, so that's okay. And that's as far as their brain can go. Developmentally, they're not able and capable yet to anticipate and know on the other side of this change is our other things. We don't know what those things are, but we do know that there is something at the end of change. And so there's kind of two parts I wanna to touch on with you today. I think I'm gonna sneeze, excuse me. <coughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> I hope I got, <laughs> I hope I got the microphone out of the way. <laughs> um, that's just, okay. Um, there's two parts to that is how, how you're handling and what, what are some ways that we can get through this and what are some thought processes that we can have as adults and then ways that you can support your kiddos, whatever age they are as we go through change. So for both of these situations, whether you're working on it for yourself or you're modeling how you might parent through this change is how do you envision, how do you want to come out of this? How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? Identify what is most important to you, like last week, and identify what the best version of yourself looks like at the end of this. It will end eventually. We don't know when, we don't know how, we don't know where, 
wrap it all up, put it in your pocket. You'll be able to figure out those whys as they happen, when the reality comes, when the news comes. But wrap those up for now and know that they've already happened. Just in your head, just be like, okay, all the change is already there. So now what do I look like at the end of it? As the adult, take a second and identify to yourself, how do you want to come out of this? How does the best version of yourself handling this? At the end of this, do you want to be more tired and exhausted? No, you don't. Do you want to be in a worse place in your relationships than you are right now? No. Do you want to be, you know, go ahead and anticipate all the things and identify what you don't want so that you can have greater clarity on what you do want. This may not be the same thought process for all of us. Maybe you are already someone who is able to think past the things that you don't want and you have so much clarity on who you already are. Not all of us are wired that way. Um, me personally, I will often work from a place of, well, I don't wanna be, um, I don't wanna be 50 pounds heavier. I don't wanna be more negative. I don't wanna have lost all of my close relationships. I, for me, I have to identify those. So then I say, okay, so I do want to be healthy. I do want to have stronger relationships. I do want to have more practice and clarity on what is most important to me and my family. For me and my thought process, I really do have to go through that step of, well, I know I don't want this, 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 and this. So what are the opposites of those? And I think that that is not necessarily the way that you're wired. Some people are wired with that wake up, get up in the morning attitude. And you know what? I am here and this is what I'm going to do today. And I want these outcomes and boom. And that motivates them enough to have that, that power of, of positive thinking, that power of their mindset. They already have that po positive thinking mindset and they're just going to go out and they're going to do it. Um, so do that. Anticipate that. Envision it. Write it down. Keep that out in front of you. Because that, and then for those of us like me who need to sort of go through that um, less than positive thought process and be like, okay, well, I know I don't want all of this. So what am I going to do to prevent that? I'm going to do these things to prevent all of this. And then I can live in the active, the positive, the action items, the vision, the goal of what I do want to be. Okay. So put that out in front of you. And then as far as how this translates with your kiddos, um, that kind of comes back to our conversation that we had on Friday, um, whether it's your high school, the middle school or elementary kiddo, any, any, any developmentally, developmental stage, excuse me, that you can have this sit down thought process conversation with. Um, in general, it looks similar because it still says, oh, but you're verbalizing all of it, okay? Instead of envisioning it for yourself, you're verbalizing it. And when they're frustrated, when they're at the, you know, they're sitting there and like, but I don't get to have my birthday party that I wanted to have. I, you know, I wanted to have all my friends over and that's it. The world is over. And to like, you know, a middle school age, high school age child, life is over <laughs> socially in their brain. They're like, well, that's it. I don't have any more friends. The world is over. Okay. Yes. And as we talked about last week, Acknowledge that, yes, it feels different. What you're feeling like is, is over to you, at the root of that is, is change. It's different. Yes, it feels different. So what do you wish? We're going to come back to it again. What do you wish right now was happening? I wish I was having a birthday party. Okay, is that the reality that we have? No, it's not. So that's an obstacle. So what can we do instead? So start problem solving those conversations. So what can we do instead to still, because what, what do you miss about your birthday party? Well, I miss being around my friends. I miss getting able to hang out with them and I miss getting gifts from them. Who knows what they're going to say? Okay. So what are some, that's, so those are some of the, so what are some of the obstacles in getting in the way of hanging out with your friends? Well, I'm not allowed to leave the house. All right. What are some obstacles getting in the way of you getting to have gifts? Well, my friends, I can't leave their house. Okay. So now let's plan. Let's say, what are some options? You wanna spend time with your friends. They can't leave the house. How can we think creatively about this? 
and they're already in it. I mean, they're already going to know, well, I can just hang out with them virtually on, you know, WebEx or Zoom or FaceTime, whatever the thing is. So even slowing down and having that conversation with, um, with your kiddos that are in that freak out mode, that our life is over and really what they're getting at the root of is, is they're trying to manage change. And so that's kind of what we're, that is what we're talking about today is how we can manage this change. And the next step I would encourage you to do is instead of being overwhelmed by, well, it's going to be forever until we get out there and we're able to implement that change is to back it up and think about what is the next step. You cannot control everything that's going to be happening in the next 24 hours, in the next hour, in the next 30 minutes. If you've got little ones that are under the age of five, you, it's minute by minute sometimes, right? And so breaking it down for yourself as well as for them saying, okay, everybody, we're all, we're all, we're all here. We're all here. We're going to take some deep breaths. We're going to do some intentional breathing, our finger breathing exercise. Did we go over that? So finger breathing is you breathe in. Yes. And then you breathe out in. With the little ones, this tool is really helpful. It's tactile. It's visual. Even if they won't hold up their hands, um, you could do it with your hand in front of them. It's even more awesome if you can hold up their little bitty hands and do the fingers for them. And of course, ultimately, if they would hold up their own hands and do the breathing, that brings us out of the fight or flight mode into our much more calm, able green zone. Um, Justin referenced how in schools and in teaching, we talk a lot about our emotions and colors. And uh, he referenced a really awesome app called the Mood Meter. It is a 90 cent, 99 cent app, but it helps to put some words to those things that we're feeling. So once you're there, then you're able to have that conversation of, okay, what we want is this. How can we take the next step to get there? What's one? Just break it down. What is the one next step? What is the one next thing that we can do? What is one more step that we can take to get closer to what we are heading towards, that we're frustrated about, that the solution we're trying to look at? Um, because what that does, it helps us take it helps take us out of fight or flight and helps us to re-identify more strongly with our desired outcomes, with what is important to us, and what is our wish in the first place. And as the adult, what you have to decide is that your desire of you coming out of this with the vision that you have of yourself and your family and your job at the end of this, what do you want to look like? Who do you want to be? That desire has to be greater than any of your fears. And that is a choice as an adult that we have to make every day. And I want you to decide this for yourself. I want you to keep this in mind that as we are spending a lot of time right here with everything that changes with news, with all of the unsure things about what's happening with our, our kids in schools and our jobs and all of the economy and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we could all go on for years. That our desire to be the best version of ourselves, our desire to have the dreams and the goals and the opportunity to get the, to those things at the end of all of this is greater is greater than our fears and when you start to feel those fears well up within you and you start to spin right and I, I often call it a spiral because usually we start we start spinning and before you know it you're at the bottom of it and you have spiraled out and you got here and you're like it's dark it's lonely it's scary this is the worst place I've ever been you're gonna need all kinds of things to get you out of it that is an ultimate fear spiral, for lack of a better term. I usually call it a shame spiral. Um, but what we end up doing is getting in a spot where when we're at the bottom of that fear spiral, we have lost complete sight of any of our desires, of our wishes and our outcomes that we've had. 
So as soon as you start feeling that all of your fears well up, pause and be like, wait a minute. My desire to be X, Y, and Z as I as I have identified today, my desire to be that is greater than my fears because fear is just a, is 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 a mindset. It's a mindset. It's not a permanent thing. It's the way that you approach the things that you think are real. It's a way that your brain is trying to predict what's going to happen. Okay? This is only a mindset. Many of these things are not real. And for some reason, our brains think that if we have all of the worst case scenarios figured out, that we'll be in a better place. And we'll have all the answers that we need to make it through all of the worst things we can possibly figure out. It's created this alternate reality. And I you know there's a bunch of science behind it. And I can pull up those articles if you ask in the comments. I can share those with you. Um, but ultimately what that does is that starts to create a bigger gap between, if I could, I would cut it up right now. And it starts to create a bigger gap between your desires of who you really are, the essence and the core of who you are, and it starts to get lost because in our, in our work, in our attempt to identify every fear, what we end up doing is getting further away from our desires, getting further away from who we said we want to be, getting further away from who is the most helpful for our families, the version of ourselves that's going to help us get through all of this change. So what I hope that you're able to take away from today is that you have identified your desires and they're clear. There's more clarity there for you so that when you do start to feel fear, which it's going to happen, it's okay. Identify it, acknowledge it, come back around to your desires, come back around to your why, come back around to that wish the outcome that you have desired and you have identified for yourself um, and keep that cycle going. This is your fears aren't going to go away. I'm not going to Pollyanna you through this <laughs> by all means. I mean, I, I am the realist. I mean, you talk to anybody on my team and they're like, well, all the reality, come on. And cause I do anticipate this, this is my natural state. I'm just being real with you guys. Like this is my natural state to be like, well, none of this is going to work because all of these things are wrong. And like I just said about I being able to identify who I want to be at the, at the end of all of this. I mean, that's my natural place of, well, who do I not want to be? These are all the things I don't. So I'm not saying that I am good or great at this. What I'm saying is that it's a practice just like yoga is a practice, just like mindset habits are a practice. Everything is a practice. There's no version of me that doesn't have fear. I even have fear within me right now about the things that I'm saying to you. I mean, just to be, to be real and transparent again. Um, I even have fear about how you're receiving these things because I, I don't know everything about you. I don't know where you're coming from. And if I knew more, if I could anticipate all of the answers, if I knew more, I would be able to give you more answers. And then I would know for sure that, you know, I'm giving you the things that, that you, that are going to be helpful to you. And, but what I have to come back around to right now is that my desire to be a service to you and your families, my desire to empower you to become the best version of yourself, my desire to share the tips and tools I have learned over the last few years and in, in all of my years of, of experience with teaching paired with the deep uh, dive I've done on personal and self-development, that my desire to share those things with you is greater than the fears that I have about how you could be perceiving what I'm saying. And so I hope that that gives you some encouragement today. Um, I hope that you're able to do something that you've never done before and celebrate it. Doing something you've never done before, that's also change. It can be something awesome that you've never done before and you want to do, and that's change. And the more positive experiences and practice you have at identifying fears 
and doing something you haven't done before, the more positive experience and practice you have with that, it's going to start to overtake and you'll have more of a muscle memory, more of a thought process memory than you did before because you've had practice doing it in the positive things so that when these fears and these less than positive things start to show up, you have more practice doing them. Um, something that we'll talk about tomorrow is a little bit of a shift of thinking about um, some doubt, delay, and divide, and how this is often a place where, where some of us live um, in that it kind of breaks down a lot of our obstacles, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna give you a little preview for that for tomorrow. And also need to, yeah, just remind you to always be here, always be pursuing your passions until they become your talent. And I just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in to this real inspired learning experience that I hope that you're taking and sharing with your friends and family and it spends some time with you for the rest of the day. And on that note, let me see if I can get my good jams up again. I like, I like this like kind of unintentional music time that we're having. It makes a big difference for me. I'm just going to be super lame and hold it up to my ear while we get out of here. Thank you for tuning in. For the first time in such a long, long